You guys, I'm so excited for this. I couldn't wait, so basically I didn't even have time to let my hair dry because I wanted to film this before starting my classes. I have some classes today. The reason I'm super excited is because me and Kayla from Kia's World have just done a collab and we talked for like two hours straight and it was such a good chat. We talked all things Dave Hollis, Rachel Hollis, and self-help in general. It was a really interesting conversation. We also touched on our like careers because we both kind of work in the same field uh, in real life. So that's very interesting. And I thought I should share this with you guys. So if you guys uh, are interested in all things <laughs> about Dave Hollis, his new book, and just the Hollises in general, Hollisville, as I have come to um, call it, basically, Keep on watching. This was a great chat. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hello, how's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Cam. And if you're not new and you keep coming back again and again, thank you. I really appreciate you. Today's video is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting me, you guys. I really appreciate it. Patreon is a platform where I post more personal kind of videos. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, there's a link in the description bar below. And with that, let's get into the video. Yeah, um, about this much through the book. So, okay. Yeah. So, but like, it, I know you read it, but I feel like the pages are like full of this graphic stuff. So it doesn't take very long to read. Yeah, that That's was a good part. <laughs> yeah, it's drawings. I, I still thought it took forever <laughs> to read like wow. I, I, like it, it does have like you know a certain font um or whatever that makes it so that pages are not like really just packed with words but still like his I always struggled with Dave's writing even like in on Instagram captions and stuff I just can't like he writes all these very long sentences and I just can't I, maybe it's because I'm a foreigner but like it's not it's harder <laughs> <laughs> it's harder for me because I'm like hey when is this sentence gonna end <laughs> yeah it's like and I'm not like I know Savvy is very into like the English language and I don't have the same like appreciation because I struggle with like writing and that was a big thing for me when I was in college was like getting into journalism and writing it AP style was not easy for me at all and I still struggle but I can't, I still don't understand what he's talking about. Like, I feel like I'm much more of a casual reader, casual writer. And I still am like, what are you talking about? Like it started off at the top talking about courage or bravery or whatever. And then by the end, we're talking about like something completely different. It's the same sentence. I'm like, what? Wait, and I have to go back and like read it. Like, okay, I kind of get it, but I don't think that's how he wants it to come across. I just think he doesn't know how to cut off a sentence. Yeah, like, okay, I think he just two thoughts. Must be this is this is how you can tell that he's not like a professional writer you know because like you can tell with Rachel even though she might be problematic as a person but like you're enjoying the book you're enjoying the writing like you know when she's shilling MLMs that's not <laughs> that's not great but like as a piece of writing just in general she can be funny you can get the idea <laughs> it's just like a, a little different and I feel like because she's in this self-help space, Dave was like, well, yeah, I can do that too. But it's not like, you know, mm -hmm. it is a skill to write. And I just felt, uh, yeah, I, I didn't study um, English, but like I studied literature. So um, I kind of have, feel like <laughs> my, my standard is like high, because obviously we studied like the best writers in France, in yeah. Russia. So, you know, sure. it's of course like a next level mm -hmm. thing. So that I don't really hold like self-help writing to the same standard because it's just, it will never like compare at all. But I, at the same time, like you're just, we have, <laughs> we had these seminars where we would analyze for like two hours, like half a page from a writer's book. And we would be like, oh, so these like figures of speech and these whatever, and this is what he's referring to. And it's just like for two hours, you would do that every week. And then you get <laughs> the mm. honest. It's like a completely different world. You're like, oh shit. Okay, well, not, nothing matters anymore. Like, what's the point, you know? Uh, so that's why it's so yeah. for me, at least. Well, but, I um, think 
you know, you got to think of how much money goes into a, a like a book like this. Like, even though it, d- it doesn't seem to be selling well, it seems like kind of the writing on the wall that it didn't do very well based on it didn't make the bestseller list, at least the first week. And, you know, usually that's when it would. Um, but these are like millions of dollars go into this being written and this being printed and this being promoted. And it's like, couldn't that money go to a, a writer that actually has more yeah. talent and more to say and a story that's, you know, in my opinion, more worthwhile to be spread. I mean, I've heard this story already on Instagram. Yeah. I've heard it on YouTube. I've heard it already. Like there's nothing so far. I mean, I, I can't say I've gotten to like the climax of whatever his life is, but I already know, you know, there's no secret. I don't think within this book, that's going to tell me like, wow, he, you know, saved 12 orphans from a fire, you know, like that's not going to yeah. happen. So it's, like, what's the point of this? It, it disappoints me that someone else that doesn't have the privilege that he does is not getting the chance to have this platform that he does. Exactly, exactly. That's where the tragedy is because I think there's like thousands, if not like hundreds of thousands of um, amateur writers who would kill to have a book deal and they can't because the spots, I mean, people will say, oh, there's just, this is this is uh, one of the things that they say in the in self help that I'm just like I get so angry with because they keep saying like, oh, there's no competition. There's so much space at the top, and I'm sure there is space at the top, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I just don't think it's sure. true. I think that these publishers have like a number that they can publish. I don't think they're just gonna be like, yeah, ten books a day, let's go. Like I just don't think no. So and I now especially it's- with him, like I don't think it did well. So. I mean, maybe he won't get a chance again, but I, I think they really just follow the money. Like when Rachel was writing and she sold 2 million plus copies, they don't really care what's on the page. They just care the money that they're getting back from it. So it could say any, it could just be a blank book. They don't care as long as it's making money. I mean, I feel like they're, the publishers are just, they're, they're a business, but you know, I don't know. I think the self-help because of the way marketing has gone so far, you know, with this social media influencer marketing, it's worked, but I think it's almost past its time. I think people are starting to catch on now and say, no, I've already read 12 books. I have the same basic message. I'm not going to put my money there anymore. So I think like 2010 to 2020 maybe was like that, like self-help period. And now we've already kind of gotten over it hopefully in my opinion yeah no I agree I think there's something like about Dave's case and then there's other people like Dave um that kind of like almost um like made the mask on the self-help industry kind of fall a little bit if we're just gonna use that because like people use that metaphor all the time in my comment section (laughs) but basically I feel like it used to be that you really believed it like it was this guy or this girl who came from this poor background and really made it and became a billionaire or whatever and then you, you you bought into that it was kind of fresh or maybe mm-hmm. it wasn't that, I don't actually know where they started, but like for sure it was like a thing and you really believed it. And then you started, I think lately in the last few years, they really pushed it like too far with all the courses, all the um, online stuff. And people are like, wait, so everyone just like, they all have like a grand story. And sometimes I think Mm -hmm. there's so many like amateur self-help gurus out there and you always see them in like uh, ads on YouTube, on our videos, they appear all the time, you know, like Amazon, and not even like product, drop shipping. Yeah, stuff like that. Like, and and Mm -hmm. just amateur Ty Lopez types. And (laughs) you're like, you can tell sometimes that they're like either in a rental property or something, but like, I just don't buy that they made it so high up. And I'm like, okay, if you can like even convince me um, that you have some sort of coming of, not coming of age, that's not a good word, but like if, if you have some sort of like story of coming from a poor background and then you made it like, if you can't even sell that idea to me, <laughs> like how, how are you going to sell me the course yeah. that costs like 10 grand or whatever? Like, it's just like, it's not happening. And I think because of the amount of them, it's now like, everyone's like, oh, wait, what? Like, obviously this is starting. How could to it be- possibly be? Yeah. Yeah. It becomes more obvious. It's supposed to be rare. Yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. They're like the one in a million or something. Like they're like the unicorn, but they're not anymore because now there's so many of them. So, <laughs> uh, so I think that, and then and I think you know, a lot of times. Oh, I, I think I'm delayed a little bit on your end. I keep hearing myself talking back. Oh no, go um, on. Okay, I was gonna say that um, you know the, a lot of the more amateur, smaller level creators that sell these types of courses, what they're selling is how to become a coach like them to sell more courses. It's very much like the MLM's pyramid scheme type thing where it's like, join my group and you'll be a part of my team. I'll teach you how to sell what I'm selling to other people to sell. And then it just goes on and on. But as we know, <laughs> there's only so many people you can you know, target in these things. And I think it's the same thing for the self-help space. It's like, it's, it's very, not to use this word incorrectly, but incestual, like everyone that is in the same industry, you know, there's Jay Shetty, there's Mel Robbins, there's Dave Hollis, there's Rachel Hollis, they all hang out together, you know, whether they are in person or in these like Instagram lives, like they all connect and talk to each other and their messaging is very similar. So for me as a consumer, it's like, okay, do I pick the rich white woman that's in her forties or do I pick the rich white man in his early fifties, like, Ooh, you know, like big, big choices there. And it's, I don't know. I think I, I am confident that people are starting to catch on and maybe they're not, they're still following these influencers, but they're not paying. And I think that's what Dave's experiencing right now that, yeah, he's kept his following fairly well from, you know, after the divorce, he's got like 450 some thousand on Instagram but that doesn't always translate into book sales or course sales or support when you make a mistake or you make a big flub for two hours on Instagram. They're not loyal fans necessarily. You know, they, you've, they've been offered so many free things for so long. Now they want it all for free. And it doesn't mean that they're going to now go, Oh, here's $18 just because it's his name's on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think with Dave in particular, just also the fact that he really just doesn't have, like, there is no reason why we should believe that he knows about self-help, because, like, why would you? Just because your wife self-helped herself, (laughs) whatever, (laughs) um, doesn't mean that you did it. No, you just just came from a good background, you got a good job, and then you went from, like, it's not really, like, an inspirational story. At least those other ones, like, seem to have, like, something a bit more just kind of catchy, um, or, or sometimes they have, like, some, some, um experience in an industry that made them you know like the might have been like I'm, not, nobody comes to mind right now but maybe they have like a fitness empire or whatever and I'm, I'm gonna be like you know what I'll, I'll listen like how did you create mm-hmm. that many gyms because like that's interesting at least you have some expertise there and I, I think I listened to one of these um interviews I can't remember his name but like uh, he was on Tom Billio, and I thought you know mm-hmm. he, he could be he could be a self-help guru and I'm sure that like, he does like uh, talks and stuff but he's not as big as um yeah the people we cover <laughs> so I don't like I'm, I've been wanting to do a story about him because him and his wife because I don't like them <laughs> like I feel like oh Tom Billio. oh yeah no uh he's I was talking think- about one, one of his like guests oh, one of his guests yeah. okay yeah. I was gonna say Tom Billio. like he's got a thing on his he's got a course of course they all have a course of course and um he's got something on there that he used to work at a door factory and I, I haven't done the story yet, but it's such bullshit. He says that he worked at a door factory and then he does this whole contrived story about how he only made like five cents an hour, you know, like a, as if it's like 1880. And then he's like, so then I opened the door to my real future. And I'm like, bullshit. Oh. And then it's like, it's like everywhere else he talks about, like he was a kid, he went to college, he got hooked up with these guys. And then he got kind of lucky when it came to quest and quest is huge, but he's no longer a part of it. And I really wonder oh, why. Really? I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. He, he strikes me as like very much a try hard. <laughs> like he yeah. tries so hard and he's constantly going on about like this idea that he wants to live forever. It's like, Dude, you know how that sounds? Like, that sounds just pathetic. <laughs> he had one who was like, I've accepted that I'm going to die. And like, you should learn the lesson. I'm like, I think everyone's pretty much 
accepted it at some point, you know, like, I don't think we need to listen to your lecture about accepting that we're all going to die. I don't know. He's like, I just came to this conclusion, like, shut up. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. Oh. It's like, oh God. Like, and the thing is he gets millions, he's got millions of subs. That's the part yeah. that bothers me. Like, you know, it's like, okay, if you're just a, you know, person who's shouting into the void, whatever, but people do think it's real. And I'm like, how, why? It's yeah. frustrating. And, and, you know, people like him and there's uh, also Lewis House. I mm -hmm. feel like you sometimes I, I, I look at Lewis and I'm like, OK, I have I don't really feel like I have much like I, I can talk about in a video about him, but he is platforming all these people like mm -hmm. if you, you might not necessarily be doing something particularly wrong. Uh, outside of platforming this but you're giving a voice to like people like Joe Dispenza who say things like oh thanks to me and my meditation this person left their wheelchair just like dude just you're not Jesus <laughs> can we yeah. just not and he Lewis just sits there and listens he's like wow yeah <laughs> it's like Tell me more. Does Interesting. Not make you think maybe for a second, Louis. Um, because I have, I have this video and his reaction was like, wow, really? I'm like, question him. It's just yeah. question him. But like he won't, because he's not like, you know, interested. He's not a journalist. In yeah. Yeah. He, he's he a promo like, channel. He doesn't basically. care. He wants the the you know connection or whatever, just to be in the same to be recommended by them too etc so you know it's still like profiting heavily off of pseudoscience and all sorts of other things so it's kind of interesting so <laughs> i feel like we yeah. we jumped right into this but yeah i was talking um i was saying I, this in my previous video that we're gonna collab and everyone was so excited and like um I said that we have some things in common and uh, I'm excited to talk about that because you're also a, a videographer or a video producer. Yes, so so and I know on my Zoom thing, it came up with my real name. So like Kia is a total like nickname slash online identity. So I have a whole world outside of this in my real world. And then Kia's world is like my online true personality. And so I haven't meshed the two worlds yet because I'm still working in the field as a video producer. So I'm slowly transitioning out of that and trying to go more full-time into content creation YouTube. Um, but until I do that, I've kind of been like on the DL because I don't, I, my name, my real name's Kayla, but I go by Kia like with everything that I put online for the most part. Except a couple of my first videos, I said my name was Gayla. So it was the cat's out of the bag if you were like there <laughs> at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I was in journalism first. I worked at a TV station as a writer. Uh, and then I worked at a newspaper as a video producer and a host. So I've kind of been in the more traditional media. And there's a lot of issues with it, I think. You know, there's a lot of great with it, but there's a lot of issues too. And then I worked for a startup, a media startup, which was kind of my first experience with online content creation, primarily online. And I liked it a lot, but as a startup, there's like always issues with money and, you know, there's people backing you and then they don't back you or like as the company in general. So I got laid off right before the pandemic happened. The whole team got laid off, uh, all the video producers and graphic designers and stuff. So that was in the end of February, 2020. And so then I was like, well, I'm gonna freelance like you were doing video production freelance. So I said, I'm gonna do that too. And then try to work on YouTube. And that's kind of where I started. So I've been doing it. I started my first video on YouTube on Kia's World was January. And then I've been, I took a little break and then now I've kind of been more consistent, but um, I started with online scammers. So like people who were faking, like having cancer essentially was where I started because I saw it on TikTok and I was just totally disgusted. And there's so many rabbit holes to go down when you actually look at some of these accounts that bring in thousands of dollars a day because they're saying they have these illnesses. But then when you like go through it, it's like they've been doing this since, you know, 2000 and they're saying they're dying tomorrow. And then, you know, they've yeah. been doing this. So that's where I started. And then when Rachel Hollis had her toilet gate, as we all call it, where she basically insulted like an entire class of women and was kind of, in my opinion, like showed like they say the mask slip yeah. happened for her where she 
like you I think I always suspected that that was her true personality like underneath like the smiling Instagram version there was like a deeper more real version of her and I think that TikTok like to me like was her being real and so that's when I started switching over to covering the Hollises and her and Rachel at first primarily and now it's gone to Dave because he's got his own stuff going on so that was kind of my yeah. journey what about you how did you get all started oh this, I don't know if I know this story somewhat somewhat similar but well kind of I was in a different niche at first I was making content about living in Scotland I made content like that for a year nobody was watching it obviously um except for this one video that is still doing like it's like my top two uh, for some reason but um mostly I was getting like a hundred views and nobody was interacting with me so um then I actually uh heard about from some from someone who's like a lifestyle youtuber who's a fan of Rachel Hollis and she just made a pass and I watched that person and she made a passing comment about how they divorced and I was like what because I had known about this for so long about um mm -hmm. I had followed well not followed Rachel but like he, she was one of the motivational gurus that I actually like could stomach <laughs> and I was like yeah. listening to her all the time and I was like oh you know she's kind of funny she's kind of quirky whatever I'm enjoying this and I knew about their um conference their marriage conference and I was like wait a minute what the fuck how can they divorce and then the divorce post said something like uh we've been struggling for three years and I was like this conference was like recent because I had I hadn't followed her for that long as to know from like years and years ago so I made a video yeah. about that and that's literally how I that that was the only video that ever went viral for me well viral mini mini viral <laughs> it has like a hundred thousand views or something but like um that's great it's yeah it was so big for me at the time when I was getting like a hundred views <laughs> so um <laughs> so that happened and then I discovered the community because I didn't really like know I had come across Savvy's videos before but I wasn't like aware that there was like an anti-MLM and an anti-motivational guru kind of community and when, once I realized I was like oh wait I have so much information about this stuff mm -hmm. I'm like I should start talking about this so yeah but um this was just kind of like a hobby basically I I was working in in TV as well in um in Scotland uh, and Scotland, Scottish TV is like, it's just like the freelance work there is insane. It's like you only work for indies. There's only like 12 <laughs> indies in the entire country. And oh, wow. um, you work on like short projects all the time. Like, you know, you can have, if you want to work in production, you can have like um, contracts that last literally like a day and other contracts that can last like a couple of months but like sometimes maybe if you're lucky you get a contract that's like six months long but like that's just rare um and you're kind of constantly jumping from one company to the other and I just hated yeah. that like I just that's I'm not like I'm kind of an acquired taste I feel especially for British people and so I was like oh this is not gonna work out for me <laughs> yeah so I, it's tough freelancing is not easy yeah and I then got like a commission on my own and I made a documentary for BBC Scotland on my own and I was hoping that that would kind of start my career maybe like more independently than even freelance but uh the pandemic hit and nothing was commissioned so except for like archive so <laughs> basically uh that's when I started making more consistent YouTube videos and I just I don't know I just feel like kind of disillusioned with TV as it is and I feel like I want to like change careers at, at the moment and I love that I have YouTube even though it makes very little money for me like I'm glad that I have something to kind of express my opinions and just be creative and and stuff while I figure out my next move career wise but yeah how do you find do you find the video freelance world <laughs> Um, I, I'm torn because, you know, I started, like I said, in journalism, so I had a deep appreciation for investigations and like how important journalism is, 
But then after working in the industry, it's such a dying industry because of its own issues. I think, you know, like they refuse to, and I'm talking about newspapers and traditional television, a lot of them refuse to innovate they're they're still trying to sell ads in a newspaper it's like we need to figure out a better way to to fund this or else it's not going to exist at least at the local level like nationally it's different because you can scale it and sell subscriptions and whatever but i mean local news is is where it begins like that's where the national news gets their stories from and so you know when, when i was working there it was your job was never safe so even if i had a full-time job it wasn't like i felt secure people were getting laid off all the time and buyouts and forced retirements and all this stuff so when i switched to freelance i went the marketing route as as opposed to freelance journalism because there was more money in it there was more need for it but that comes with its its you know downsides too i don't really love marketing in general i don't really ethically like kind of steering people down a path that may not be true but the marketing material forces you to like make it seem this way and just because you're good at something or capable at something I don't necessarily believe anymore that you should do it you know just because I can make a video make this company look great should I you know and that's where I started to question things and during that period of time when I was considering those things I found anti-MLM and I had no idea like you like that it was a community of people and back then when I was watching it I was like editing marketing stuff videos for people and some of it was on the scammier side I will say and I didn't necessarily get into it knowing that but like having the YouTubers that were talking about what is a MLM and what is you know this predatory different markets and stuff I was like I think that's what I'm editing for you know I'm like doing people's videos about like buying a course and I'm like mm, okay this probably is not what I should be doing but watching those videos in the background while I was editing like it opened my eyes to like all the other people feel this way too and it's not just me being negative and cynical it's like actually concerning so um i don't know where i began with that sentence but basically i'm, I'm basically regurgitating dave hollis's style of writing now in my speech <laughs> going on and on but, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i i you know i found some success with freelancing and marketing but morally i have a lot of issues and i'm hoping that one day i could do youtube full-time and with support of you know, people who like this content and people who watch the videos that will be enough to sustain me. That's the dream. But like you yeah. said, it does, you know, just add sense and you know, it's not secure either. It's like, uh, I kind of need something else too. So yeah, I'm in a, in a, in a middle period as well. Like what should I do with my life? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are in that spot right now. I think the pandemic made people think a lot. And I think you guys in the States are probably like the most hit at the moment because of I read about the Great Depression and four million people quit in August. So like, mm -hmm. it's like whoa, okay. And and there's some um, uh, some of that happening in the UK, but it's not as much. But it's happening in the UK too. Um, now I'm not in the UK anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I just think a lot of people are thinking like, wait, like, am I like, what is like life? <laughs> is life worth it when you're just Cause like once you had to spend two years in your bedroom on your on your computer, like working for some job, if you had a job like mm -hmm. you said that you didn't love, and um, and I sh I'm sure that lots of people were in that situation. I think people are starting to question like, what am I doing? Yeah, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. and I think that's where it kind of comes back full circle to. MLM and self-help that a lot, almost everyone wants purpose. They want their life to mean something. And so when a influencer says like, I'll teach you how to get there, it's enticing because we all want that. We all don't want to work at a fast food place and get yelled at all day. That's not anyone's dream, but yet millions of people do it. So it's, yeah, I think the pandemic taking the time to like think about things, a lot of people are, are wanting to take a chance and try something else, but that's not how the system, at least here, is set up. Like, you know, people to, to run these businesses, like basically you have to make minimum wage, but that's not livable anymore. So how are we going to, you know, get those two things to exist at once? I don't know. But I'm glad that people are setting up for themselves and saying, I'm not going to work at this job for yeah. $7 an hour. And when my rent is $2,000 a month, like, yeah. like something needs to happen. And I think that's, this is the time that it's happening. 
yeah. what will come of it, I don't know. I mean, we could see a whole market crash and be back to 2008, or hey, it might just... The French were fucking killed their... <laughs> <laughs> they're uh the king so you know it can it can get pretty intense yeah. when people are not happy with their um living conditions considering they're working really hard because that was the situation in france when um uh before the great revolution that's what happened like people were just like working really hard and they were heavily underpaid so um they were yeah. exploited and they eventually killed the king so you know there you go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You need to be extreme sometimes to get like people to hear you and that's a scary thing to think but it's true it's like you know people have been complacent for a long long time and then all of a sudden a pandemic happens and now you're on your own it's like okay you know we need some help here yeah so it's yeah it's it's not a great time to be in america yeah. <laughs> or or anywhere really like or anywhere on the night everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah i want to come to europe <laughs> I want to go to South America, to be honest. I know that sounds horrible, but like, it's just, I want to break from having to be in the rat race all the time and try to, you know, one up the guy next to you. It's such a competitive world. I, I don't want to compete. I just want to exist, honestly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that would be really nice. <laughs> That's all I ask. Just let me exist. I don't have to have a mansion. I just want to like live and not be worried. I'm going to be on the street tomorrow that's yeah. all <laughs> yeah that's oh, that is so real <laughs> um yeah. i feel like <laughs> i wonder if this is what uh, has sparked the crisis for dave the probably current crisis do you think so <laughs> i don't know because <laughs> i feel like they were obviously living a very high-end lifestyle and now suddenly he's like oh wait Nobody's buying the book. <laughs> it does reek. And when I saw him do the pancake gate, as we'll call it, when he was on his patio of peace screaming for two hours and ignoring his child and his other child, um, I did reek to me of like desperation and like that hustle culture, like, you know, almost like, okay, this is a dire situation. And I don't care if I look like a jerk. I'm going to sell this book if it's the last thing I do. But usually that comes with like a desperate need, like, you know, are you going to lose the house if you don't sell this book? Like, it seemed like there was, you know, some sort of something deeper than just like, oh, I need my ego, you know, uh, like up today. It seems like, no, this is like serious. So maybe, I don't know, financially, divorce is not cheap. Yeah. I don't think he, you know, maybe he has Disney stock or whatever, but you know, you have to liquidate that if you want to use it. So it's not like he can just pull from that easily necessarily. And he hasn't had a job in a while. So it's like this book kind of was his way to make money. And I don't think from what I've seen on, you know, Reddit and things, it did not sell very well. Do you know so, what's, what's super hmm. tragic is like, I noticed that the first, well, after the divorce, um, everyone was like in dave's favor everyone like on reddit me was too like, oh because like rachel left he was left with the kids so suddenly he had this like really positive online persona everyone was like for some reason hating on rachel because how dare a woman not take the kids i feel like that's the double standard there because men after yeah. divorce tend to leave and nobody nobody shames them for not taking the kids but uh, i mean Mm -hmm. a different <laughs> a different direction of the conversation but anyways like everyone was in favor of Dave he was gaining a lot of attention a lot of positive attention and uh he he just shot himself in the foot so bad like I'm yeah. not sure how he managed this because everyone was loving him like dude just relax. The truth comes out though, eventually. That's kind of the, the, what I've seen with all these people, any celebrity, any person that's public facing. I think because you talk, they talk so much, you gotta think of every Instagram live he did in the last month. I mean, that's like days worth of content. You can't be on guard the whole time. Some Something's gonna slip up. And then I feel like almost because something slips up and no one catches it, like you almost have a confidence like, Oh, I can say anything and they're going to love it. Cause they'll, you know, they'll buy my dirty socks. Cause I own you. Oh my you know? God. 
<laughs> wow. So it's like a delusion that you convince yourself, like no matter what I say, what I do, they're, they're going to love it because it's me. But people don't have that loyalty, especially when, you know, you're online and you can pick it apart. Like, you know, both you and I have, it's, you know, people do go away or they they become embarrassed that they liked you in the first place and then they kind of like hide away and go oh, I'm not going to support you anymore because when Dave had his thing and people you know people were really coming down hard after the videos on YouTube started coming out kind of explaining what happened his comment section was full of negativity and I didn't see any of his friends from the self-help space support him I didn't see one you mean now I recently yeah I didn't have I didn't see one person have his back and say you know oh this is not right. Dave is in the right. Like it was just silence. And I think that's telling because he says like, oh, these are my best friends and these are my good friends. But yet when you're in a crisis, they were radio silent. Yeah. Because they don't want to be part of the mess. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think Dave was like, I speculate that something must have happened that triggered this divorce because everything was on track and he quits Disney. He then works for Rachel's company as CEO of nothing else. You know what I mean? Like just, just a chill little, you know, low key CEO. Um, <laughs> and then they, they came up with the Rise app and they were doing all these like um, fitness stuff, like which, okay, I guess they, they are fit. So I'll, I'll give them that. But um. But then suddenly Dave quits. Um, he or no, he was demoted, and then um, divorce happens. And I'm like, I don't know. And then every time he speaks, or or every time, um, God, what's her name? Heidi speaks. <laughs> she like seems to just forget the what the lie was there or something. It's like, oh yeah, no, yeah, we did, we've been dating like a couple of months. Like, and then she says like, oh yeah, a year ago, your dad was texting me pictures of, uh, <laughs> it's like, wait, which, so you were- What was the time team? frame? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh, I wonder, no. <laughs> now this is again, like I have no proof, but like, I feel like the divorce wouldn't have been so quick almost, yeah. I know they've been together for so long, but it felt like a, like from him just leaving a, an industry that he was in for like two decades to come work for Rachel and then suddenly they divorce. It's like, what? Something happened there. I don't think it's just. Yeah, something. I don't know. And in the book, he says that they were on their wedding anniversary trip at a hotel they go on a walk and that's when Rachel drops the bomb that she wants a divorce and that there's no changing her mind. So it almost seems like, yeah, it seems sudden. Like if you're booking trips to go on a wedding anniversary to celebrate, and also you're going to announce the divorce <laughs> on that trip, it doesn't, it seems abrupt, but I wonder if Rachel, you know, there's been a lot of speculation that she's been um, really influenced by that other writer yeah i heard of that i've not read the book so i'm not sure what that was about yeah gabby bernstein i think her name is i haven't read the book either but apparently oh, uh, it's very I think it's untamed wait untamed was it something like that it's by like glenn, she... yeah untamed by glenn and boyle i think people have been oh, okay yeah that. there's that one and there's another one it's like gabby something i think it's something burnt i think it's bernstein but anyway she basically that author is like very into like source energy and like mantras and you know crystals and all that stuff and i wonder if she was being influenced by those two writers but other writers that were what were going through divorce and found success in that space like they were popular as a couple but then found their real singular success once they announced their divorce and whatever and i wonder if she was sick of dave because she's been sick of him for years but kept him around for money purposes and like you know the brand and then she she decided like she had this plan where it's like no i know the way i'm going to write a book called didn't see that coming that's going to launch me into a divorcee expert and then i'm going to start doing conferences about divorce women and go down that route so i don't have to deal with him anymore and that'll be my success and i think she came up with that as he was ceo and he was like not doing well at it i guess or he was annoying her more that's yeah. my guess that she came up with a plan yeah i wonder i think that's uh, yeah 
that's for sure a possibility. I do think that Rachel was miserable in that marriage. <laughs> I, I, it just, you could tell. <laughs> you could tell there were some yeah. videos of, of them working together and they were sometimes just like for marketing purposes, like to show off. But like Rachel would look at him like, <laughs> yeah. like what the fuck? In their lives too, if you watch their morning show, I never did, but I see a lot of people that comment on that and like she would always cut him off. And he would kind of like just go back in the background and it was always Rachel's show, but he was kind of like, like the like sidekick. And I think he got, he, he felt as a man that he should be the one leading or they should both be leading separately. I don't think he liked being a sidekick and he probably made her pay yeah. for it. Like that's why he, he took CEO because he was sick of people saying like, oh, Rachel's husband, but that's part of the deal. Like you're, you know, you're married to a very successful woman. Get over it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but some people can't, you know, and that's, yeah. I think where the divorce happens. And yeah, you can handle it. Cause I, th I think, yeah, as you said, like he was kind of the sidekick in that relationship once Rachel became successful. And I think once, because I think for a while, Rachel, even though she was successful, she wasn't necessarily making a lot of money, but she was making, I mean, she was definitely making more like than me, but I think she had like a small events company and like, I think it was just low key through Dave's connections in the industry. Yeah. And, um, and then she, when she transitioned to this, well, first of all, she never she didn't need him anymore and then she also made like crazy money so um she obviously like you know then you I wonder if you're in that situation obviously I would have no way to know but um, I wonder if you're in that situation and you go like okay so what is your value my dude like what do you uh, bring to the table because yeah. money I have and uh, connections now I have and I don't need yours anymore so are you a nice guy or not mm -hmm. and I guess the answer we haven't recently yeah and I wonder too about Disney that's been something that people have been speculating about too is was it as much of Dave's choice as he makes it seem to be he really emphasizes that he was the one who decided to leave but I wonder if it was more of a mutual decision where they were kind of you know getting on his case about being so involved with Rachel's company and almost prioritizing that over the Disney brand because he was in all of the photos with Rachel he was going to rise conferences he was starting to promote apps and stuff like you said and then you know what, what happened to Disney like they are a very strict company you know Disney World you couldn't even have a mustache as an employee there until like five years ago so I wonder if they were a little bit not loving his, you know, go Rachel mentality and wanted it to be more go Disney. And he saw the money that Rachel was bringing in and thought, you know, whatever, I'm going to focus here. And they said, hey, uh, we are not cool with this anymore. You should leave. We'll let you resign. And he kind of changed that into, oh, I took a risk and was courageous to leave. But maybe it wasn't as much of his choice as he makes it seem that's amazing because couldn't he go back yeah. you know why yeah. does he need to go back if he's now wanting to you know i don't yeah. know that is very interesting that is very interesting yeah. and you might have a point there i never <laughs> thought of that this is like whoa <laughs> but yeah could be it could be because i did i knew um some people who uh, were in scotland who got like a extra job or something in uh disney paris and they were mm -hmm. like they, they were meant they were just like these people wearing the dresses in 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 disney uh, paris and disneyland sorry and it was that's own it's owned by disney just to take them i'm so dumb <laughs> but, <laughs> but basically um yeah they were saying that they can't even break character for like however long the shift is like it did sound a bit like culty but this mm -hmm. is like such a vague memory because it was like I'm, I I knew these girls like so so long ago I can't even remember exactly but when you're telling me that's just what makes me think that's my only reference of Disney being really strict um but I've not yeah. done really a, a, a deep dive into into them or anything but that I do yeah. these girls being like oh yeah for three months I was there for in summer and it was like insanely strict and um 
Yeah, interesting. They, they protect their reputation very well. And you got to remember too, Girl Wash Your Face came out in what, 2018, I believe. And that painted Dave as such a jerk that, you know, he was rude when they got married and like, you know, when they first met and he was calling her a 19 year old and all this stuff. So they probably were, were keeping a file on him from that. And even if it's not his fault, I don't think a company as powerful as Disney cares. Like they need to protect their reputation. And now, I don't know, maybe through those years, he started to get more pushed down the list and they said, okay, it's your time to leave now. And then he negotiated with Rachel to go to her company and that didn't work out. Maybe, maybe it wasn't her choice either. You know, she goes, well, he's got no job now. Might as well come, you know, do the power couple thing. And then that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a what a disaster that was. <laughs> he's a good spin. He 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 knows how to spin something because he's been spinning this whole controversy as like, see, I told you I'm human. It's like, mm. oh, oh my God. Sometimes he like just I feel like sometimes he uses words like humanness. It's like you have human the word humanity. Just <laughs> Yeah, um, inside of <laughs> inside of this book, it's like it's in the book. Just say in. You don't have to say side. <laughs> they want their own vernacular, so I guess. It's so weird. Oh god, the amount of like grammatical errors I found that was like whoa. Because for me, it's jarring sometimes. Like sometimes I have to look up words in the dictionary. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, I'm a foreigner, so and it still doesn't make sense. You're like, okay, I still don't yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah um this book was like such a drag I'm not I'm not excited for you to finish it <laughs> like it's just I'm at, yeah I'm at the part where he just started talking about uh the rock so you know it's get, it's getting juicy <laughs> yeah th th that chapter is is definitely like showing us a few things because like I never realized that actually Rachel she always sold that story as like I'm always so inspired by the rock because he's so amazing and and of course you believe that because so many people are inspired by the rock of course like sure. come on and and she's just like this and this and I'm gonna do what the rock did and blah 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 and then the rock sends her liquor no the rock sends, sends her like energy drinks and stuff and she's like oh my god I'm so excited like and then turns out no actually they were just friends like they knew each other like dude yeah. you just you literally like manufactured an entire like fan fiction story here. I think it's part of it it's part of the whole the whole thing to get you to think that they're like you like oh I have a celebrity crush do you remember this is like this is like 90s but Rosie O'Donnell used to always talk about loving Tom Cruise like that was her big she always talk about like oh my god I have a huge crush on, crush on Tom Cruise it's like the same thing it's like just a way to relate like oh I love the rock and he's a bigger celebrity than me just like I'm a bigger celebrity than you it's like you know I don't know it's it's just like it's all fake to me yeah they all have friendships like on the DL and like it's part of the marketing to make it seem like you're just like, like even like Gary V he's got his whole Jets thing like that's his goal his aspiration so it keeps people to think like oh Gary's got an aspiration that he hasn't achieved yet just like I do we're just the same and it's like yeah I don't know I think it's like the <laughs> manufactured part yeah it's totally. not real yeah, I know. And I I will say I personally have never really had like celebrity crushes or anything of the sort. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just never. I'm trying to think if I have one, I guess like John Mayer, which is like the worst one to choose because he's like such a womanizer apparently, but I just love his music. So I've always wanted to meet him, but I met some oh, yeah. low-key celebrities, like very low-key that nobody would have ever heard of while working in TV in Scotland. Um, well, one of them actually I made a documentary with Lawrence Janey, who is the drag uh, queen of the UK uh, right now. So, you know, that was cool. that was something. Still, nobody really knows <laughs> except for Scottish people. Yeah. But um, other than that, I met like a few of them who were like really small celebrities, but they... Um, they were so different in person. <laughs> they were like, like, in, like on screen, they were like so loud and whatever. And then I met them in person. One of them was super shy. And I was like, I can't reconcile this. Like, I can't 
if yeah. you're not that that guy that I saw was like confident and bold and loud and you're just here being super shy so I was like yeah okay so it's always just a persona I, I felt not always of course but like that's that was my experience with small celebrities maybe that's why they're so small <laughs> but um I, I think part of it is like and I believe it too like YouTube I think it's thought of as more of an authentic medium. You know, you can just kind of talk. And I think you and I both kind of speak the way we speak in real life on the channel for the most part. So it seems, but other people, they're treating it as like a performance. Like it's an, it's an act, you know, it's they're actors while they're recording and then they're their normal self offline. And yeah, it's weird though, because it's not like it's on a theater or a TV, it's on the internet, which is supposed to be, or, or originally was the authentic medium where you're just yourself. But now that there's money to be made, there's, you know, sponsors to be had, that's where some of the performative stuff happens. And I think I'm not used to it yet. I feel the same way you do. It's like, oh, why aren't you as boisterous as you are on your channel? Like, it's weird. Why, you know, I thought you were fun all the time. And it's like, you know, they're just normal people. Do you remember Glozell? She was like a YouTuber from like the early days. Yeah. She did the cinnamon challenge. She was like a huge viral video. It had like a hundred million views or something crazy. She came in when I worked in news. Um, she came into the newspaper to do a video with us. And same thing on camera, she was like the way she is. And then off camera, she literally did not want to speak at all. She just sat in the corner, it was on her phone and she didn't want to be bothered. But you've turned the camera on. She was like, hey guys, wow. what's up? Hey, and I was like, weird. That was my first that experience. So weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it jarring. You just can't really like, imagine. Like, but I feel like this is so, sort of what happened here with like, uh, Dave mm -hmm. and Rachel because through that TikTok and through this Instagram live you're suddenly like oh wait so you're not like this person that you pretend to be all the time you're just you're just yeah. saying you're kind you're just saying you're a good dad <laughs> this, mm -hmm. is the, this is not what we see <laughs> um, well, uh, like even Dave it's like he's like my purpose in life. And he says this in the book, which I'm still, I've been highlighting it every time he brings it up. He's like, my purpose in life is to honor my creator's purpose for me. Yeah. So what's the purpose? Like, what is the purpose? Is it to what? And he doesn't, he doesn't say it's like, my purpose is to honor the purpose of my life. Okay. But what's the purpose to honor? It's like, it, there's no, it's like to help people to make money, to be a good dad. Like, well, what is it? And he doesn't say it. And it's like so frustrating. Cause it's like, how are you supposed to teach other people to find their purpose when you don't even say what yours is? Yeah. It's I, I, I know I wrote down something about that. Actually, I'm trying to find it, but I sort of got like, look at this. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm like a student. <laughs> I have oh, so yeah. many pages. Um, I wrote something about that because he says at one point that his purpose was to um, uh, like be an inspiration for people or something like to help other people. And, that, and I was like, and I think I, I, I mentioned it in my review because I was like, this is complete and utter bullshit <laughs> because where did you come up with that? Because that's not that where did you do that at disney while selling people movies while selling movies to theater for a very long a very high amount of money like did you yeah. empower the theaters <laughs> like what uh let's show it don't what? tell it like yeah. I, I know this is a recurrent dream that these self-help gurus have to help people so much but <laughs> obviously um you don't have to just like steal it word for word from your wife. Like just come up with your own idea. And yeah. then like this, oh my God. I don't know if you really realize this far, but this book is filled with Rachel stuff. Like just- Oh yeah, I can tell already. I was like- Even the map, even the map that he references so much, let me find it. It's, it's exactly what the RISE conference was because I went to the RISE conference that just happened the most recent one. Okay, so here's the map, right? Basically, it says you are here preparing you for where you are going. Okay, Rachel's conference is day one, your past, day two, your present, and day three, three is your future. How is this any different? It's like literally verbatim Rachel's teaching. 
and she's not the first one or the last one to use that. I mean, that's pretty, you know, standard, but yeah, he's like taking it exactly and putting like a nautical spin on it, like for no reason. Yeah. Wow. And also in his previous book, which I did not read, but I read, I watched Savvy's review of it mm-hmm. and he had those like, um, the lie you tell yourself, which is ex- was exactly what Rachel had. I can't remember in which one, but one of her previous books, she had exactly that, like those um, mm-hmm. pages, the lie you tell yourself and how to untell it to, I don't know. But basically this is an, a new thing, but like right now that they're broken up, they've divorced, I'm like, I just don't feel comfortable with all the stuff that I've heard from Rachel being used uh, for Dave to make money I just don't know um, it makes me really really uncomfortable like it was like so often in this book that I came across it that I was like I just and he was also being passive aggressive towards her at the same time so it's like you can both steal your, your my ex-wife's work and be passive aggressive to her just pick yeah. one side <laughs> yeah I have a I have a, another conspiracy theory about the first book that he wrote. So on Facebook, there's a group that's like the launch group. So for Built Through Courage, there's like a, a Facebook group where people who are fans go and talk about the book and help support it, right? So I was I, I haven't been accepted into the group, but because Facebook allows you to see the name changes that that group went through, it's been there since 20 like 16 or something like it's been there for a while and it's changed names based on the uh, book that was coming out both Rachel and Dave shared this group the first one the name of the group was called get out of your own way and then it changed to girl wash your face so my theory is that Rachel wanted to name her book get out of your own way and then changed it to girl wash your face and then Dave took the name of her original title of the book and use it as his own. Oh. (laughs) So I don't even think the first book was his own original idea at all. I think they might have, I don't know if they trademarked it, but I have a feeling that they had the name already sort of like in the Hollis sphere for Rachel. And then Dave just decided like, I'll just take it and do my own thing. I'm looking up, get out of your own way. That's my theory. When it came out. Because it came oh, out after Girls so Stop Apologizing books. for Leaving. There's so many books with this title. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why Rachel ditched it. And I think she did well too. Okay, so this came out in 2020, on, in March 2020. The reason I, I, I'm thinking of this mm-hmm. right now, because as you're talking, I'm thinking, isn't that roughly when he, or just, the, just after, sorry, can you hear me? Because it shows me that my internet is unstable. Oh, yeah. I got yeah. you. Um, so uh, he, when did he quit Disney? Because I wonder if this book had something to do with it. Yeah, maybe. Um, he, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can, I can tell, because I, I follow their channels. I also love how Dave Hollis's channel has less than both of our sub counts. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that. I love so it. Crazy. I think it's karma. <laughs> I know. Okay, so exactly. I found an article saying Disney film distributor um, uh, boss, <laughs> Disney film distributor boss, Dave Hollis exiting. Um, and this was in March 2018. Oh no, maybe it didn't have anything to do with that, but I suppose, did, is that when he left in 2018? That, that has- sounds right. That sounds right. Cause he was with Rachel in 2019 doing like a video about their message for the team for like the Hollis employees so that would have been he would have already been there wow okay this these years have passed really fast yeah. <laughs> um interesting no I guess it didn't have anything to do with that but, um because like that could have been a big reason for Disney but I guess yeah. not it's like it's it, it came out two years after that so um he probably wasn't yeah. even working I'll send you the link of the group that I'm talking about so you can see the change so if you if you click on um, tr- under transparency, it says history group created in 2017. You can see all the names. And the first one in 2017, it says get out of your own way launch team. But that makes no sense because the book didn't come out till 2020. 
So someone had that name before and Dave was, was still at Disney in 2017. So I think it was Rachel's book and then he just took it, which is not a huge deal, but also like it just kind of cements that he doesn't have an original thought. Yeah, 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 totally. And I like, yeah, as, as I've read this book and I noticed just how many things I already knew because I heard them in a million, in a million videos from Rachel, I, it would make complete sense. And also, I, it would also make sense that Rachel would ditch that title because there's so many books with that title. So I think that was a smart thing to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And a stupid thing for him to do. But I mean, yeah. Well, that, I think originally too, he wanted to he wanted to come with a book that said "boy wash your face" or "guy wash your face." I I don't remember where I heard that, but it was like oh my some random like <laughs> excerpt, and I was like, I'm glad that you did not do that. Oh, wow. Boy, that wash your face. face. Yeah, I don't think that would have landed with the boys. <laughs> yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. That's not, yeah. I don't think you can just replace, you know, girl with boy and get a whole new audience. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.